Hey guys, this is Goku and on this channel we talk about poker and ideas that can improve your life. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and click the subscribe button because I'll be honored to have you here. In this video, I'll show you how to calculate expected value of your decisions in poker based on an example of a hand. Please pay special attention to this video because EV is one of the most important factors to consider when playing Hold'em. So, let's get right into it. Expected value is a concept in probability that is used to describe the average outcome of a given scenario. So say you're flipping a coin with a friend and he tells you he's gonna pay you one dollar if it's heads and you're gonna have to pay him 50 cents if it's tails. How do you evaluate if this game is profitable for you or not? You use expected value or EV. Every coin flip has equal probability of being heads or tails. So you calculate the EV by multiplying 0.5 which is the probability of it being heads by $1 which is the amount your friend is going to give you and you add to that 0.5 which is the probability of it being tails multiplied by minus 50 cents which is the amount you're gonna have to pay your friend. So that comes to 50 cents minus 25 cents, which equals 25 cents. So you can expect to win 25 cents out of every single coin flip in the long run. So in the same way, you can use EV to calculate the probability of any decision in your life. For example, whether to buy a new car or a used one, whether to buy a house or to rent one whether to invest in company A or company B, and so on. Of course, you don't always know the exact probabilities as with flipping a coin, and most of the time, you'll have to estimate them. In poker, your goal is obviously to maximize the expected value, as you want to maximize your profits and minimize your losses. We'll go over an example of a hand in a minute, but let's first talk about hand ranges. Whenever you are playing a hand, you should always think about what your opponent could be holding in that spot. And you shouldn't try to put him on a specific hand like, I'm sure he has aces, so I'm gonna fold. No, you always have to think about all the possible hands your opponent could play this way up to this point, and that is his range of hands. So let's go over an example. You raise from middle position with aces and get called by the button and the small blind. The board comes jack 10-5, small blind checks and you bet 1500. The button, who is a loose aggressive player, raises to 5500. At this point, given your knowledge of the player, you put him roughly on the following range of hands. All is jacks and tens, which you're bidding, 48%. All is straight and flush draws, 38%. All is jack tens and pocket fives, 14%. His race gives you the odds of 4 to 9, so you only need to win about 31% of the time to break even. So you call. You don't want to race because you think it would probably make him fold all his jacks and tens which you're beating. The turn is a 4 of clubs. It's a great card for you as it doesn't complete any of his draws and you decide to bet 6500. The button calls. Because he just calls there, you think that he most likely doesn't have a pair of jacks or tens at this point and that he'd fold most of his weak draws. You think he'd re-raise all in the majority of his hands that are beating you and all his pure bluffs. So you narrow down his range to strong draws 80% of the time and hands that are beating you 15%. 
The river is a king of hearts. What's your strategy? Do you go all in for your remaining 6400 or do you check call? At this point, you are pot committed and your hand is too strong to fold, so folding is not an option. Let's look at the EV to help us decide what to do. Based on how you read this hand, you estimate that his range consists of draws that got there about 75% of the time and draws that missed about 25% of the time. Let's calculate the expected value of the first decision. There's 26k in the pot and you're going to bet 6400. So the EV is 0.75 times minus 6400 plus 0.25 times 26,000 which is 1700. So on average you're gonna make a profit of 1700 in this spot if you correctly estimated your opponent's range. What about the check call? Well, you know that after your check the button is gonna shovel in with all his hands that are beating you and with about 80% of the hands that he missed. So the expected value is 0.75 times minus 6400 plus 0.25 times 0.80 times 32,400 plus 0.20 times 26,000, which is 2,980. So check coin is actually better in the spot as in the long run it will earn you 1280 more than betting out. Ok great, let's sum up what you've learned. You now know that your decisions on the poker table should always be made so that you are maximizing the expected value. As you've seen in the example, it's sometimes better not to bet and go for a check call in a spot where it seems you should be betting. You should always think about the range of hands your opponents could have in a specific spot and as the hand goes on, you can narrow it down significantly. Of course, the more experience you have and the more information you have on your opponent, the better you'll be able to estimate their range. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and post them below and I'll be sure to answer them as best as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to watch more videos like this in the future. You want to learn how to play poker? Great! You have little or no experience playing poker? No problem! Do you want to learn the fundamentals, the most basic principles that allow you to easily win money when playing with casual players? That's perfect! Because this Udemy course was created specifically for people like you. My name is Mateusz. I've played over 3 million hands of No Limit Texas Hold'em and I would like to teach you how to play poker like a pro. What you will learn in this course are the fundamentals, the APC of poker, condensed into 21 short and easily digestible lectures which all together take just under 2.5 hours to watch. In each lecture you will learn a different concept which you can test out and practice immediately after watching. And that's really the best way of taking this course. As with all skills in life, you cannot become a pro unless you spend some hours practicing the craft. So you're gonna have to practice and play some poker for at least 30 minutes after each and every lesson. If you do that, I have no doubt that you will become a winning poker player in less than two weeks. Well, do you wanna become a good poker player? Do you wanna be able to beat recreational players easily? Do you want to have a great time winning at your local home games? Great! Get this course now and start winning at poker!